So if you've seen the series Mad Men, uh, it was exactly like that. Except for the alcohol, people could smoke in the office because ITC was an account of HTA. And, uh, you know, I loved my job at HTA. I was doing, I was going great guns. I was enjoying myself. Uh, but everybody around me smoked. The person in front of me, behind me, to the left, right. And I was a little frustrated. And I said, I want to take this holiday. And I took this holiday and I was at Storms River Valley under a big tree. Uh, it was like Buddha getting his enlightenment. Little did I know that it wasn't when I came back to start the business. Um, but I was listening to a radio commercial trying to sell rugby tickets. And that's when I discovered there's this structural hole in India that needs to be fulfilled. And how do you democratize the information and remove information arbitrage? And so that was really the genesis of the idea. But I mulled over it and we continued to travel down the, uh, the trip. And uh, then it was Cape Town. And from Cape Town, we went to the wine growing region of Cape Town, which is Stellenbosch. And so, you know, you pay 10 rands or 20 rands uh, to each vineyard or some of the vineyards are free. And you get three shots of wine or five shots of wine and everybody's swirling wine and being very uppity. And I'm from India and I'm a Sindhi. The double complication. I'm not spitting any wine. So it was good wine. I kept drinking. And by the time it was the afternoon, my head was spinning. So I was lying on a bunk bed in a youth hostel with my head spinning. That's when I sent a text message to my boss saying, I'm quitting and I'm not coming back. So I tell people it was alcohol and, and, and smoking that did it. But you're right, it was uh, the genesis was really the, the commercial that I heard. And I sort of connected that with the challenges that were faced by the youth in India where there was no information, there was black marketing of ticket, there was information arbitrage, there was no democracy of, of information, you would get lati charged. Even after spending a night outside a stadium to buy your tickets overnight and you still couldn't get it because touts had bought it. And how do you sort of clean up that? And that was really the idea. And it's been 18 years since. Idea in 1999 was to provide uh, ticketing solutions for plays, movies, concerts, events. And from day one and the word go, we did that. Um, so we got funded by Chase Capital Partners, JP Morgan in 99. I was 24 years old. Uh, on a fact sheet, you know, a term sheet was signed and we were funded. Uh, even at that time, the business was exactly what it is today. Uh, but nobody knew of us. Uh, nobody had heard of us because the ecosystem didn't exist. Credit card penetration, debit card, net banking uh, didn't exist. Uh, people didn't have mobile phones and data connections. Um, so the ecosystem didn't exist. So the thing that worked was a lot of people called on the phone and bought tickets and we would home deliver them and collect cash. And we would block inventory at cinemas. And because there was no automated systems at cinemas. But we would even sell plays and concerts and events and sports. But there wasn't enough sports except for that one big cricket match. And it was a very controlled, uh, uh, you know, environment. And so it was a hugely inefficient model. And on the weekend, we had an opportunity loss because we couldn't sell more because we had blocked inventory. And on the weekday, we had an actual loss because we were taking a risk on the inventory. And so there weren't enough people who were buying tickets on the weekday. So if you look at all parameters, they were out of whack. The parameters on the business, the ecosystem existence. And so that's why people only looked at us and said, hey, listen, you are doing movie tickets. But we did everything. And the model was exactly the way it was. It's just that we stayed the course and the market around us changed. We haven't. So, and people's perception has changed, not us. So we still drive the same cars, wear the same dirty t-shirts, but you know, we're still the same guys. Coming back to your, uh, to your original question that, um, you know, do you see, is it more exciting? I think Monday mornings have, has, have been as exciting as Friday evenings for me and that hasn't changed that equation. Because if that excitement changes, then I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh, and that hasn't changed in 18 years. The problems were different, our solutions were different, but we as people trying to solve for those problems hasn't changed as, as the DNA of the company. So, and the scale has changed obviously, but uh, the excitement still stays and that stamina which you know people talk about that are you a marathon runner are you a sprinter do you have the stamina i think those questions have been put to rest and that is the question that a lot of entrepreneurs should be asked today they start thinking as investors the moment they sort of um, uh, start a venture they're looking at the valuation and an exit 
they should really be thinking about building uh, an enterprise which is lasting. I keep telling people that more companies die out of indigestion than starvation. I think that hunger goes away from companies and that enthusiasm to run goes away because they've been funded, they become fat and lazy. There's too much money, they start doing lazy things. To, to, to address a consumer's need, they think the best thing to do is to do an ATL campaign and spend money in, in a newspaper and take full page ads. So I think they become lazy. I don't enjoy entertainment in the sense my entertainment I derive from somewhere else. I've probably watched 20 Hindi movies in my life. I haven't watched Shole, Dilwale, Dhulanya, Le Jayenge. I haven't watched those big movies. So I'm, I, I, I don't rub shoulders with movie stars. I don't go for premieres. I'm not from the film industry. Uh, I don't enjoy movies as much. I may watch the odd, uh, you know, Hollywood film or a very a niche, uh, you know, character-led sort of Hindi film. Um, and uh, I like concerts. I won't go for most EDM concerts or live events, but I will go for a few. Uh, sports, I don't watch too much of live sports. So for me, entertainment is derived out of other things. I sail and race boats on the weekend. I swim and I go to the gym. Um, I listen to a lot of music at home and that's entertainment for me. I may go out for an occasional beer on a Friday or hang out with the team. For me, that's entertainment. Look, I'm not a recluse. I'm not trying to prove a point. Uh, the fact is that uh, I have a certain philosophy. I had a friend who um, at the age of 39, I'm 40, I'll turn 42 in October. Uh, he was a year or two older to me and this was a couple of years ago. The guy died. He was 39. He was running on uh, marine drive and the guy popped it. He had a heart attack and he was gone in five minutes before his driver could take him to the hospital. He had close to a thousand friends and uh, we told everybody, listen, this guy's gone and let's meet. This is his funeral. Everybody was, hey, rest in peace, so and so, rest in peace. We love you, this, that, all of that. Six guys showed up, uh, six guys showed up for his funeral. That is the day I decided post the funeral to go back home and said, I'm going to, you know, delete my account. I don't want people poking me and thumbs upping me on my birthday. You want to wish me, call me, man. It's okay if you don't want to wish me or don't want to meet me. It's fine. That's okay. Just don't poke me and thumbs up me. Uh, pick up the phone, send me a message. It's okay. So that's the reason why I'm not on Facebook. As far as Twitter is concerned, I've never taken to it. I don't tweet. Uh, I don't need to tell people how I'm feeling today or who I'm sitting with or I'm checking in to an airport or eating in a certain, drinking coffee in a certain restaurant. It's very personal, right? I just feel that uh, a, a life is a marathon and so is a lasting enterprises. And we're in the relationships and people's business. You don't screw over people. You shouldn't be nasty. Maybe it was the value system of my parents. It might have emanated from there because they, um, came as refugee kids. Both my parents came from Pakistan, right? So they were Sindhis and they came on a ship, on a train. They thought they'd go back. They had luxurious, uh, uh, luxury lifestyle there. Uh, they never went back because they dug a hole, put all the gold, money, whatever in there. Sort of, they didn't have safes and banks that time. There were no refrigerators at that time. They always thought they'll go back. They never went back. So my father was in a refugee camp in Delhi. My mother was in Kanpur. My father then went and learned Punjabi. Uh, then eventually went to uh, Banaras in the university, studied there, then went to Gorakhpur, started a business, uh, finally had an arranged marriage and then my mom and he decided that we want a better lifestyle for our future sort of kids and therefore they gave everything up and they were risk takers and Sindhis, maybe that's a part of the DNA of the genes that you're a slight risk taker and they did that, they proved it. They came to Bombay shirtless, penniless, like how their parents came, shirtless and penniless. And so I don't fear failure, maybe that's where it comes from. But they gave me the right sort of education even though they couldn't afford it. I went to a great school, I went to piano, nursery, speech, I had a well-rounded education. Uh, moral values are very high. Uh, you picked up some eraser from school, there was always a question, how did you get it? There was always, go back, give it, do the right thing. I, I race boats on the weekend, I sail boats, last 12, 13 years. Uh, it's something that I enjoy, deeply enjoy. Saturdays is booked for racing boats. Uh, some Saturdays and Sundays, that's my passion. Uh, music is a big passion. I used to play the piano many years ago and dabble in a little bit of guitar. Uh, but really now, mm, I mean, I just enjoy music. I live, I go for live uh, shows and experiences. I'm not crazy about it that I'll drop everything and fly off to another country to watch. 
but if I do get the opportunity, I would love to. I like all sorts of music. I like EDM, modern music. Somebody may call it teeny bopper music. I like it. If it's a catchy song, I'll keep listening to it 200 times in five days till I get sick of it. So I get very loopy in that sense. I love uh, Western classical. Uh, so music is an important part of my life. I have a full sonar system all over the house. From the time I wake up or whenever I'm at home, music is playing. In the car, music is playing. Sometimes it sort of drives the other person mad. Um, sailing is very important to me. Uh, I, uh, I like going to the gym and swimming. Uh, I love uh, spending time outdoors. Uh, beach is important and uh, you know, just being out there, outdoors. I've trekked a bit. I don't find that much time. I love uh, travel. I take four or five vacations a year. Uh, I love meeting people, solving problems. Uh, I'm not an extrovert. I can't talk like that, but I'm at heart an introvert. I'm very private and personal.